What up everyone, Odie Bookshees here, and on this episode of Bookshees Build, we're gonna talk about a car that I built many years ago, the Art Performance Field Suspension Hyundai Genesis Coupe. It all started in 2015 when Art Performance and I decided to partner up and campaign a Korean car in professional drifting. Art Performance manufactures body kits, body panels, and high-end exhaust systems for mainly Korean applications, but they also manufacture some high-performance parts for select Japanese and domestic models. Arc Performance already had a Hyundai Genesis Coupe that they wanted me to compete in. The car was previously driven by a cool dude named Dennis Merzanis, and the car had a very poor track record. After the first private test day, I knew that I had to completely rebuild the car to even consider competing in it in Formula Drift. Arc Performance was down to have me transform their Genesis Coupe into an Audi approved winning drift car. We then formulated an awesome plan and calendar for the car. We aggressively started developing the car in 2015, and after the first wave of improvements, I competed in the Formula Drift season opener at Streets of Long Beach in 2015 and placed second. We then shipped the car out to Japan for the Formula Drift Fuji round, where I also placed second. We continued to only do select events with the car in 2015, while I was competing full-time in my Nissan S14 in the Formula Drift season. This allowed us to collect lots of testing data and ultimately rebuild the entire car and confidently attack the 2016 Formula Drift season. I think the Hyundai Genesis Coupe is a really, really cool looking car. And I really like the way this one looks. This one's got the Arc Performance Legato body kit on it. Every single body panel on this car is an Arc Performance body panel, except for the doors. The doors are still the factory sheet metal doors. They've obviously been gutted out, so they're really lightweight. And we're still using the uh, original roof skin as well. Front's got a Legato front bumper on it, which is really cool looking. It's aggressive, but it's not over the top and it's super durable. It's got an Arc Performance carbon fiber hood. Uh, we obviously opened up some of the vents a little bit larger to get the supercharger to breathe in some cold air and um, Arc Performance Legato front fenders that are wide to accommodate the extra wide track width that we're running on this car. This is a really wide car. It just uh, looks pretty subtle because everything's in proportion and we're trying to keep the wheels inside of the fenders as much as possible. So wide fenders, Legato side skirts, Legato rear quarter panels. These attach to the stock sheet metal here. Um, these are really nice and wide. They're durable right beneath the actual body panel attachment, we trimmed out all the factory sheet metal to try to get as much weight out of it as possible. And back here, we got an Legato rear bumper that also I'm a big fan of because it's kind of an OEM looking bumper, but it's, uh, it definitely accommodates the rear quarter panels, especially these cool little extension pieces here that let the wide body flow into the bumper as well. Uh, Arc Performance rear trunk lid. We trimmed out the back of the rear trunk lid because there is a radiator that sits right in beautiful ducting work that was done by uh, Nate over at Bink Industries. He, he helped me build this car and campaign it quite a bit. We got a polycarbonate rear window that we trimmed out for this aluminum ducting to go into this huge Ron Davis radiator. So this ducting isn't really an effort to get a lot of air into the radiator. The aerodynamics honestly on drift cars don't really allow air on its own to get into the radiator. There's usually a ton of turbulence and ducting for the most part is just allowing the radiator to have fresh air to suck in through the fans. And also it also serves as a firewall for the driver. So right under here, um, basically got the driver compartment. So we're trying to keep it safe and adhere to the rule book to have the radiator completely separated from the driver compartment. And you could tell here right under the polycarbonate, you have the firewall extension going over here so that way the sides of the radiator are also protected from the driver completely. When I competed in this car in Formula Drift we actually had the headlights completely gutted out. We were only using the lens. For demo purposes we put the factory headlights back in it because they just look really really nice and our performance put some nice uh, touches on the headlight itself. In an effort to get as much weight out of the front of the car we had to do a lot of things. This particular car came with a Brembo brake package, which was awesome. They worked good, but we stepped up to a Willwood kit because it's even lighter. So we're using a two-piece Willwood rotor with an aluminum hat and this uh, caliper is really lightweight. I think we we're able to shave off about like seven pounds per corner, which doesn't seem like a lot, but honestly, every single little bit counts. So 
Willwood front brakes. And in the rear, we're still rocking the Brembo factory brakes because they work fine. And, you know, like I said, we were more concerned about pulling as much weight out of the front of the car as possible and trying to shift some of it as far back as possible. On this car, after I received it and after I drove it, I realized that um, it's gonna take a lot of effort to move stuff back and uh, in an effort to get a lot of the weight from the front to the back, we also moved the driver seating position about six inches further back. So you can tell the seat is like as far back as we can get it. We didn't want to cut the cage out of the car and redo it. So we literally basically ran it all the way up to the harness bar, which gave us about six inches of weight being pushed back. Um, that allowed us to put a floor mount pedal set in here. Uh, when I first got the car, it had a original pedal set in there, an original steering column. That weighed a lot. The steering column from the factory on these Hyundai Genesis coupes is pretty big and gnarly and it's adjustable. So we fabbed up a custom steering column. You can tell we are using the, the stock exit point on the firewall for it. And we hung two heim joints to the actual cage. Um, another cool part is we welded in the factory end part of the steering column, which allows us to run like an off the shelf bolt on NRG quick release for the steering wheel. So these are Willwood pedals, uh, floor mount obviously, and we have tons of space to mount them up on the floor on this car without even going to a reverse mount where the master cylinders are in the front. So tons of room in this car. Um, this thing is huge and this is why it weighs quite a bit. Center of gravity in this car is pretty high. I mean, this thing is really tall compared to any S chassis I've ever driven. The roof line is, is huge. If you look inside of here, look at the top of the seat to the roof. I mean, you got tons and tons of room over here. Uh, it's kind of unusual for me. I'm used to small compact cars, but you know, we did what we got to do to work with this thing and, and make it light. So we moved a lot of the weight as low as possible and as far back as possible. The really trick part of this car is this carbon fiber dash. I think this carbon fiber dash was actually made by Reese Millen before I got my hands on the car. It's really nice, really lightweight, super simple. Um, this is kind of old school because once again, this car was you know rebuilt in 2015. We got just a very analog style uh, panel here. I uh, got the Willwood brake bias adjuster, which is in a really convenient spot. This car is running a GSR four speed dog box. Uh, ASD pull-up style handbrake and in an effort to keep the weight down yes that is a inline hydraulic handbrake and uh, it it was a little bit uh, it took a little bit of time to get used to an inline handbrake but honestly this thing's dialed it it has very little movement it hooks up real good and uh, in an effort to I'd rather save the weight in the car and um, just deal with an inline handbrake it worked out just fine for me in the in the long run. Oh, let's get in here. Oh, I love sitting in this car. It's so many memories. This thing's been all over the place. I've had some good times in this thing. And uh, just looking in here, I am noticing that it's got some, uh, some stuff that is total blast from the past. What we got here is a Blackview camera. This is when Formula Drift used to mandate all the drivers to run a Blackview dash cam, which was, I thought, pretty cool. This camera faces right back at me, so. I was able to share a lot of in-car footage with my uh, fans. And if you look back here, that right there is a mount for the DOS system. So this car we also used in a D1 sanctioned event. It was actually an FIA event, the first FIA event ever. And they rigged up a DOS system in here. And you see some of the wires that they just kind of zip tied in place that we had to run for that one event. Um, Man, that was I think in 2017 and it was a cool experience and it was really cool to ship this car to Japan for a second time and compete with it. So um, like I said, this car has been, it's been around and it's, I've got some really solid memories in it. So just sitting in it right here is, uh, is definitely bringing a lot of those back and it's, it's cool to reminisce and, and uh, just sit in here and, and think about the good times that I've had in this car. Like all my cars, I run a NRG quick release hub and uh, OD Signature Edition steering wheel. This is actually not the most current OD steering wheel. This is uh, one that we made quite a while ago. It's a different design, but hey, we're trying to keep this car era specific. So all the stuff that's in here is the way it was put away the last time it was uh, driven. 
the seating position in this car is actually super comfortable. I really like the way it's laid out. It takes a little while for me to get used to a pull-up handbrake, but other than that, everything's super comfortable. Got these Cobra custom seats that were built for our performance. Uh, these are super comfy and uh, they're obviously engraved with their logo, with the Takata logo. Takata is a big partner with us and they still are. Check out this print on these seats. Man, these things look really badass. I mean, these have a lot of seat time in them and they're still holding together, not a single rip or tear. Really good quality product. All right, let's take a look what's going on back here. So we actually moved the fuel cell to the inside of the car here when I started driving it. And uh, that was a big effort to get polar weight out of the very back of the car and, and bring it closer to the axle. So the fuel cell is here, it's obviously covered up so that the FD rule book uh, allows us to run it here. Even the filler neck is actually filled up. So there is a small filler neck inside of that huge four inch tube, but we had to isolate the whole thing, um, you know, to adhere to the rule book. Here's the inside of the ducting that also serves as a firewall. I really like that unit because it doesn't make it so we have to run a firewall here. So we gain all this space, we gain access to the fuel cell. Those are just Zeus tabs that twist off with a 90 degree uh, twist and then the fuel cell is accessible just by lifting that panel off. Super easy to get to. We still have the nitrous bottle mounted right here. <laughs> we actually had to pull it out uh, because the last event that we did with the car was the FIA sanctioned event and nitrous was not allowed at that event. So we had to retune the car pull the nitrous out of it and we actually couldn't get our hands on uh, the type of ethanol that we run that's manufactured by Ignite in Japan. It was just a royal pain to ship it out there. So we had to retune the car not to run nitrous and we had to also tune it on the fuel that was available to us in Japan which was I think only 105 octane. So it went from uh, about 800 foot-pounds of torque and horsepower to like seven mid 700s and um, it still rips it's still really fun to drive but uh, it's always not fun to detune a car uh, just for one event all right let's check out what's going on under the hood it's been a while since i opened this thing up actually so this is a custom built ls7 it's actually stroked is so it's now 440 cubic inch it's got a dragon slayer cali's crank in it and a lot of cool high-end parts inside the motor. This motor has been running for many, many years and I'm actually surprised at how good it feels when I drive it on the track. Uh, it's got a custom swap kit on here. I think it was built by like Fuel Performance and really badass long tube headers. The, the reason this thing makes a lot of good power and one of the things that really hooked me on this car when I first tested it is this Vortec supercharger on here. So this Vortec unit makes a ton of boost, a ton of power, and is just super fun to drive. Honestly, the first time I drove this car, um, the power was just so enticing. It, I felt like a little kid getting a new toy. And even though the car needed a lot of help in the handling department, I knew that there was a ton of potential running this Vortec supercharger that's on the car. And it, uh, it really hooked me. I, I was eager to develop the rest of the car to, to work well because uh, I just really like the power plant. Ever since I drove a car with a Vortec blower on it, I, I never turned back. You know, now I got a Vortec blower on, um, on my S14 that I competed in for many, many years. And we just put a Vortec blower in the brand new S15 that we built. So I uh, definitely got hooked on that power plant. And uh, this car kind of started that all off for me. Oh, uh, this is an Arc Performance uh, strut tower brace. This car, all Genesis coupes really do need it. We measure the deflection on the strut towers when you put it on scales and take it back off, off the ground. And these things do move quite a bit. So this Arc Performance strut tower brace is a lifesaver. We obviously move the shock from uh, its original location here as far out as the rule book allows us and far forward as well, because we're trying to take um, you know, some of the caster out of it and move the wheels as far forward as possible. Obviously in order to pull that off, we have to do a ton, a ton of custom work to the suspension. So. This whole front end is custom built by uh, me and Nate over at Bank Industries. We, ton we spent a ton of time on the racetrack developing this angle kit and a ton of time honestly on the computer just calculating uh, the amount of uh, scrub radius that we want, um, the Ackerman, and um, how much camber we're going to be able to run. It's, uh, it was a lot of versions of this particular angle kit until we got it just right and I really do truly think that 
this car is kind of was ahead of its time as far as the front angle kit is concerned. Taking uh, a closer look at the front end, this is a custom Field 442 kit. Um, this is actually a really old school 442 kit. We actually started making a different style of compression adjustment reservoir, but it's cool to see the evolution of the field coilovers by looking at this car. So we got the field 442 kit on here. We got some swift springs, helper spring and a main spring. We're using a 60 mil spring it looks like on here at the time. And uh, check out this outer tie rod that we are using. Um, this is an outer tie rod that was adapted from a NASCAR application. It's super adjustable, super strong. And the way we have it adapted to the steering rack is this really cool offset clevis that allows us the appropriate steering geometry that we want out of this car. The engine package uses a lot of Holley Performance parts and a lot of the parts that are under the Holley Performance umbrella like this MSD Atomic Air Force intake manifold. We put this thing on this LS7 right when the MSD Atomic came out and we were very eager to see what it did on the dyno and it was, it was amazing. It, it made more power than the stock LS7 manifold and uh, it's, it's been in here for a long time kicking butt. Fuel injection is managed by a Holley HP EFI unit. This is a Holley harness that comes with the Holley EFI unit all as a kit. Uh, we're running OEM coil packs on this and um, OEM water pump, some Dash 16 uh, lines that come off the water pump. We welded this bad boy together to make it adapt a Dash 16 AN to the factory thermostat housing and we run these all the way back to the back of the car into the radiator. They go under the car versus going through the inside of the car. I just felt that that's a lot cleaner instead of having to shield it while it's inside the car and I definitely don't like the heat as a driver inside of there. Got an oil cooler here and a power steering cooler. Obviously intercooler, a uh, big turbo smart blow off valve on this unit and that's about it. There's obviously a ton of technology inside of the motor um, and how to make that much power and make it reliably but from the outside of the motor, it looks like a pretty simple LS7 build. I think I covered most of the stuff in the engine bay. Let's check out what we got going on back here. Lightweight trunk lid, it's made by Arc Performance. So we got a pair of small fans, they're 14 inch, nothing crazy, it's really simple. And the Dash 16 lines that were running under the car, they come into these uh, bulkheads here and pop back, pop back up to connect to the radiator super simple cooling system and like mentioned earlier look at all the weight that we removed from the back of the car so when i got a hold of this car the fuel cell used to be, sit here the radiator was a lot further back um, the bash bar structures are way too gnarly so we decided to basically cut everything on the back of the car right behind the subframe and uh, just get rid of it and start fresh so these are really thin wall bash bars i think they're 065 they're a little bit away from the bumper in order to give me some flexibility and they're super easy to replace. You just literally pop out these bolts and they come right off. The whole back end of the car is just kind of flexible, just hanging out there. We got some uh, Delarin rods that hold it in place with some clips, uh, tons of crush room. All the sheet metal has been cut out so this is all super flexible and uh, as I like to say crash friendly. All right let's check out underneath of this thing. So under here is a winter winter's performance quick change. I wanted to run a sway bar in the car and we couldn't really get the factory one to fit. So I actually chopped up a factory sway bar, made it go around the quick change cover and uh, it definitely got the job done. It was effective and I was actually surprised how well it worked. We got a lot of custom arms back here. We had to make a lot of the stuff or modify things that are on the market. We moved the pickup points a ton. Every single pickup point on this car has been moved around until we got enough mechanical grip out of the car. Uh, Feel 442 coilovers back here with some fuel shock covers. Our Feel 442 coilovers with a completely different compression reservoir that we use now, but these still worked well for us. It's really cool to see the evolution of these things. Pillover, over, you can see a drive shaft shop axle. It's a custom axle that we run on all of our cars by drive shaft shop. Uh, it's got Porsche style outer and inner CVs that hook it into the winner's quick change. The winner's quick change has a billet spool inside of it. That's what I run on all my cars and it works out really well. It's kind of a low maintenance item. Actually wearing out the spool, the splines inside the spool were starting to get sloppy. So what we tried and it worked out really well as we hard anodized the billet spool 
and it made it last a whole lot longer. Now Winter's Performance offers uh, some steel inserts into the splines so that you don't have that problem, but it was really cool to find a solution that we were able to handle ourselves for this particular application. This thing, you can see a small yellow top Optima. We got the tiniest one we could get our hands on, so it's lightweight. And you can see the fuel cell right underneath there as well. Let's start this thing up. of time on this car taking it all the way apart cutting the back of it off cutting the front off rebuilding the entire car i had and competed in the 2016 formula drift championship i ended up getting fourth overall with this thing which was amazing to take a car that was undeveloped and make it into a very competitive drift car i ended up getting on the podium that season and winning one of the rounds as well and ultimately moving forward in 2017, I decided to go back to a shorter wheelbase chassis that was smaller and more nimble. So I went back to my S chassis and I've uh, been campaigning in S chassis ever since. If you guys enjoy the breakdown of the Arc Performance Fuel Suspension Hyundai Genesis Coupe, please make sure to subscribe and uh, that way you don't miss out on any of the other cool videos that I got coming up for you.